This is a pattern for a twin throat throttle body. Uh, it's been lovingly made out of aluminium and it's fairly heavy to work with actually. As you can see the part line for it, which is straight across here, is quite flat, but because it's not a split pattern, we do need an odd side like this to set up the parting line for us. And the pattern just sits down nicely in the odd side right to the parting line. Okay, one moulding box. Now you notice the odd side has matching pinholes and slots, the same as the box does. Slot one in, pin the other in. That's quite important that you uh, that it's done that way. Round holes both ends don't always work that well. Now we need a little bit of part on the pattern, not much. And then we sweep most of it off. I just want a very thin film on there. That's, that looks about right. Because I use a facing sand, I use this little strange looking tin funnel thing to keep the facing sand just where I want it on the pattern. Because I don't want to waste the facing sand. It takes a lot of effort to make it and it's quite fine and uh, if you let too much of it get in the sand, it, the system sand, it clogs it all up. So, okay. The facing sand actually starts life exactly the same as the system sand. It's just that the facing sand's been through something a bit like a homemade flour mill to grind it finer. And it is very, very fine. That's all I need, just a, just a thin film. As long as it covers it, that's okay. Now we sieve on a fair bit of the system sand. <coughs> sieve sand always rams a bit better and uh, also, of course, you get any bits of rubbish out that might have found their way into your sand. And old bits of core, for example. You don't want those anywhere near your actual casting. Okay. That should be enough. Now remove that bit. Top up the box completely with sand. Take a bit down there. Now, because this pattern's quite high, I can't immediately ram right over all of it. If I did that, I'd damage the pattern, so I've got to sort of be a bit careful on the first ram here. Just to keep in my mind's eye where the, where the pattern is. So I'm going to the outside like this, coming a little here, up through the middle. Now, I need to firm up around these uh, the sprue and the risers here and across that end. Sometimes it doesn't hurt to give a bit of a poke with the fingers over the areas where the pattern is a bit high just to make certain there's a, enough sand coverage before you do the ramming. If you ram, if you hit the pattern, obviously you might damage it, but if you just, even if you only just ram close to it without hitting it, you wind up with strange little ramming defects that inevitably mar the surface of the casting. Not too bad there, a little bit there, a bit more in here. These narrow areas don't ram well, you need to devote a bit of special attention to that. always pays to use, keep using the sand that falls onto the bench because it does tend to dry out, particularly if the weather's warm. Because once it's dry, it's not very good at making mold. I like to firm up the edge of these a bit with a go around them to, to ram it a bit harder. This makes that sand a bit stronger around those edges. Okay, wobble these out, just twist and pull the sprue, you don't want to wobble out. If you do, it tends to wobble like that in the mould and you, just, you don't wind up with a nice tapered shape in the sprue. 
you wind up with a sort of an inverted barrel, which is definitely not what you want. A little bit of part down there and uh, blow it around to coat the inside of the sprue and risers. This just makes it easier to clean out any loose sand later. Cut it off with my trusty power hacksaw blade. Two side first, working from the middle of the big holes. Back, smooth side to finish off. Radius this because it will be the bottom of the pouring basin later. I'll just break the edge of those. Now I've also found with these throttle bodies that it's not a bad idea to have a little vent here. This pokes down to a very thin stainless wire. This pokes down to make a hole until it uh, hits the top of the pattern. Side. This parting agent, incidentally, it's a commercially purchased one. Um, it is, in fact, calcium carbonate, very finely ground limestone, nothing more. It's much better than talc, but I, I know some people do use talc, but. Uh, Talc costs you about $10 a kilo, that limestone was $3 a kilo. Okay. Looks good. More facing sand. And for this final round, I have a little tool that helps. And it's a little beauty. have to be a bit careful with it though. It can turn the mould into a brick-like consistency. It. The only way I've got of loosening this is to tap the box, and unfortunately that tends to loosen the box on the sand as much as the sand on the pattern. But not much we can do about it. Try and tighten the sand in the box again with that. sand away from the pins. Baseboard. Breathe in and hope and lift. bit of edge loss there and there and a little bit there those two don't really matter because that end gets machined that's a bit of a problem I'll have to file that off the pattern off the casting later rather a little bit of part again putting the part on there just makes it easier to get any loose sand off that flies around that might be flying around uh, in further processing of the mould. It also allows you to see when you've blown it away, blow the mould off properly because the, the white sort of goes. Right, I've loosened that pattern in there. The odd side, put the odd side back on. Spin it over. Quick 
loosen again. Breathe in and hope and lift again. That's a bit of a worry this time I lost a little bit right in there. That is a bit of a problem because I'll have to file that off the casting too. It's always better if you don't have to file stuff off the casting because it uh, filing uh, sort of ruins the surface look of the casting. Just clean the rough edges of these off. Make certain that it's through and rises as well and through. Right, I will lose sand off. Just got that. Same here. I tend to be quite fussy about this. Nothing worse than having a nice casting ruined by little pieces of sand marring the surface of the casting. Okay. Now we put this core in. There's nothing to stop the core floating up at this end because the rises are over it and once the metal gets uh, underneath the core, sand being lighter than metal, it will tend to float. So to stop that, what I do is put the two bits of steel gently, delicately in the core and they will weight it down and pick up the core and carefully place it in position. There we go. So we try and fit it. If anything's going to fall off, it'll fall off now. And indeed, bits of it have. The cores are a little tight in this box. In this cavity, they're not quite right. It damages the mould in these two places. So I'll just knock the damage off. And stuff out of this mould. A quick check with the torch to make certain we have got all the loose stuff out. Again, this is well worth doing if you don't want to later find you've got a casting that's been ruined by a bit of loose sand floating around. Right, that's okay. Now, In order to get enough volume in the risers, I have to extend them and therefore obviously the sprue. So there's the little sprue extension and the two riser extensions. And a bit of a tight fit, but they sort of make it. Now we can close the mould finally. And that's another one done. <laughs> 